शैल वी बिगिन नाउ लेट मी so what we discussing before we uh, i mean before lunch was that you know mostly we were talking about the the welfare state the structure of the state and then within the uh, the ideological structure i mean which is in ideas and which is of course tried to translate into uh, into a real structure uh and then what are the, what are the challenges within that i mean when it comes to the practice when it comes to the comes to the implementation how how those ideas uh, idea of structures are kind of you know uh, uh translating uh, at at the at the real level so what is the what, and what are the challenges within it right so mostly we are talking about that uh and also we have been talking about just to refresh what uh, we started with the question of uh, representation marginality marginalization community identity on the basis of uh, you know different ideas of marginalization uh, as uh, ashwini had mentioned about the need based uh, marginalization the community based marginalization identity based i had mentioned about the uh different forms of i mean um different forms of community different structure of communities i have mentioned about the women's uh, community referred to the women's reservation bill and uh, also talked about the specially abled uh, you know people and then considering them as a community when it comes to the policy structure and also we mentioned in that context that there are reservation for uh such you know uh, marginalized uh, communities or like uh, the physically challenged you know people so uh just to carry forward this discussion we're not going back to again the problem of representation in others but yet it is uh, mostly we'll be talking about two uh, very important aspect within the larger welfare state uh i mean the model uh, the structure of the welfare state um, in india and its promises what happened it will come okay it promises and uh, again how uh, again the question of justice which is the last part of the of the uh, discussion that we'll have before we go to the go to the film uh so uh, just to you know uh bring in the context of justice before that i would okay. okay. yeah so before we move ahead with the question of justice uh, we i would propose to have a uh, discussion on again it is a question of representation and uh, uh which has something to do with the reservation for the for the women's reservation bill as we had just mentioned uh we would like to have your thoughts on that i mean what do you what do you think about the the women's reservation bill also to make a connection because before we go to the uh, lunch before we went to the lunch there was a discussion around the question of uh, the matrilineal society the social structure of the the uh, meghalaya the khasi <coughs> social structure and and how uh, and the role of the woman so is there i mean how do we see uh, look at the bill which was passed in the parliament recently where the representation uh, question is addressed and also how it is linked with the uh, the <coughs> the status of women in the sixth schedule and it's very interesting to see now that we are all women here uh, just one um, male participant we are having so uh, let's let's hear it out i mean let's talk about it a little and then we move to the justice the question of justice and then we go to the film that's how i'm imagining it right if you can the light go then i have to touch it then, yeah and the password is 2811 okay tweet one minute okay but it's not coming it takes some time okay yeah 
So please someone volunteer. I mean, we can go one by one also. Or we can have a group discussion kind of a thing. I mean, it can be just viewpoint. I mean, what do you think of the women's reservation bill? We can start with you. Personally. Yeah, personally. Yeah, yeah. I was of the opinion that it was not really required because it's because it's based on like voting and I mean, how they are selected. Huh? So the people who were sitting at the top, if they had this in mind and if they were choosing competent people, not going on the basis of gender or anything, just to get competency and maybe qualification, it was a fair system. And I feel equally even women could have been so. Elected or selected for that. So, personal of the thing is not really required in the long run because that can also be to a setback for us. Setback in a sense? Uh, in a sense that uh, we'll always have this in mind that there's already a reservation for us. So, we'll not be working outside of our potential. Or in, uh, it's in that sense because of that in mind that we already have that place that's already kept for us. Mm -hmm. So when I'm saying that the equal opportunity or maybe growth or at our male counters mm -hmm. in that sense. And can you contextualize, uh, uh, again, I mean, it, this could be a personal opinion. Can you contextualize it in particularly in the case of six schedule areas? Six schedule area. I mean, Meghala case, case, yeah. Here, yeah. Sure, even though we're in the system, mm -hmm. like that has been said time and again. However, we look at the representative traits of women being there. Is a, I think it's just about one percent or maybe less. Be the council or the state. Hmm. So again, in that sense, it's not like the women are not coming forward or participating in these elections or participating in uh, in different uh, platforms hmm. where they can represent the population. Because the people from the ground level who are actually voting or selecting, they play a bigger role in that. Hmm. So it all depends on your competency and potential at the end of the day. So according to this uh, equal playing field when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So the men and women can both participate in that. Uh, no, that's all right. But then it is, uh, I mean, I just... It's just an observation that it, I see a contradiction in your opinion. Like as you said that though it is a matrilineal society, there is less representation. It's just one person or two person. So it's not happening anyway. So with the reservation, maybe we can hope that we'll have a more part. 50 person, if 50 person is reserved as it, it proposes and if it translates into uh, implemented in the six schedule this, uh, states as well, then uh, we'll get more representation from the women. Don't you think so? Yes, but the ones who be sitting up there, are they really after ah right to represent the yes. women community. It's just because they've been given the reservation, so yes, even the bare minimum that could be done now, even the ones who are like not as qualified as such are sitting over there, mm -hmm. will still be a proper representation. Yeah. So that's my opinion. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank no. you. Yeah. So some women is not reading the five. Okay. So um, I I'll open it, but uh, I I'll have a connecting connector. I don't have a connector. This one won't work. No, mine is Apple. I'll be needing a connector. Joy, uh, do we have a connector for Apple Mac? Mm. Do you have a laptop? Will the film work? Film just check with the film. Um, I'll just try to fix it for that part. Okay, fine. Yeah, uh, thank you. So uh, sorry no, for no, that. No, yeah. The mindset needs to be changed from the ground level. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. It's the social aspect that has to be dealt with more than the resolution or the critical aspect, the awareness, and maybe just to bring about a change in the mindset, the practices from our homes, because it all starts from smaller groups. Mm -hmm. so maybe changes can be brought from there, hence thought, and then better selections can take place, and then we'll be represented better, be it male or female. Mm -hmm. For this competent, as well as a qualification, then we'll be represented better. Yeah, uh, but then what kind of changes you're proposing here in the uh, education? Ah, education is one of the markers, yes, right? That's 
this is what we always say as well, have a second home. Mm. That actually shapes some mindset and shape whatever social words uh, that we have as well. Mm-hmm. So we start from the beginning there will come. Yeah. Thanks. We are moving ahead with anyone volunteers. For me, I think it's a good one. We want to uh, see uh, in this generation how it's playing with the power dynamics. Um, what do you mean by power dynamics? Power dynamics in the sense that are they representing just for the sake of representing, or and they, are they really representing? Meaning, I have been told now if a woman is competent enough, okay, and there was no opportunities. Huh, I'm just giving an example. If the woman is competent enough, they are competent enough women, then there are no opportunities. The women in the ocean women is good. That women is, uh, you know, that competent women, because there is a seat reserved for her, she has the ability to go out and get us, get elected. The second problem is that, does the power dynamics change? It will be like, okay, I cannot become the, um, I cannot become the elected member. I'll put my wife as an elected member. I'll put my sister as the uh, women candidate and she will become the, uh, the representative. But the power, the actual power of that uh, position is with someone else. Which is happening in the panchayats. Yeah, which is happening in the panchayat. The power is with someone else. Is it with actually with her? That's one problem. Second problem is that, again in the power dynamics, if a woman is not being allowed to go out of the house and become someone, even though she's very competent, the woman is a person who helps her. She gets the actual power to go out and become an elected member. So the two phases of the power dynamics. Then the second thing is, what is expected of the representative? Now, just because it is she, the woman, are we expecting her to talk about matters that are of women because she is quote unquote, she has come into power from the women's reservation seat, or we are uh, we are having uh, allowing not allowing the word is not allowed. We are expecting her to talk about matters in every field that she can as a member of any of the mm. lawmaking bodies mm. or we just have thinking that no because she is a woman she will talk about women related matters because she is coming from a women's seat so my question is that we need to think of this matters also when we see the women's resolution too. so what we are actually asking yeah but i'm trying i mean that's an interesting point uh, but then i'm just trying to reflect on the last point that you have mentioned that why it is even uh, thought that you know or it is it is i mean we have we're having this imagination that you know or we are imagining that uh, possibility that the women reserve uh, women representatives will be uh, coming through the reserve seats uh, will be just addressing or expected to be addressed uh, to uh, to address the issues related concerning the woman and why even that thought has come why even we are you know imagining that probability because that's one of the rationals because behind the women reservation women reservation one of the very old rationals behind uh, literature or work behind women reservation is that or behind women representation is that because in women's issues, there are no representation of women. When women will come, they will talk about issues that are like uh, about women and they will help us in talking about them. That's one of the rationals behind actually many cases of women's issues. And it's not me talking about that. No, so but there, I no, but part. rational is not that. I mean, the rational which is uh, which is in black and white. The rational is about just about the representation. It is not uh, the rational is not that you know the women representatives will be addressing the uh, issues concerning the. It is it is expected to be. So my my concern is that that why even that expectation. I mean, it's I'm not saying that it is your expectation. As you said that it is it is expected that or even that expectation is. Why that is a gender specific expectation again? Because it's it's a yeah. So this is a problem of representation again, right? Um, okay, so we'll move ahead and then we'll discuss, ma'am. What's your thought? I mean, anything you think of uh, the bill? Uh, 
was it needed was it not needed or i mean there is a lot i mean it is not going to be implemented immediately right so there there are challenges of implementation also so and if if you can reflect on your you know something which is um, local i mean which you have seen in your uh, in your district in your uh, council uh, about representation not about exactly about the bill but then somehow you can connect with it about the women representation any observation you have i think i'm like um... As far as I have um, seen, like, uh, uh, for example, like for the election, MDC election, mm -hmm. right? usually we don't have a woman contestant for that uh, election. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is uh, one woman uh, representation from East Jankaya. She is the only woman mm -hmm. to contest. Mm -hmm. And if we see, like, if we if we happen to to see, like, the, that that lady, she got the support of all the family members and some, like, from the locality also. Hmm. Okay, fine. But in the other way, women in our place, okay, if they say they have the power, but we are still looked down. We are still considered like. Uh, like the uh, what to say the term like minority but we cannot take the power the decision we cannot make a decision in our, uh, on our own mm -hmm. so that's why we are like the uh, from the society as a whole we we are like there is a, no chance for us mm -hmm. like, there is no no what to say like there there is no chance for us to step ahead mm -hmm. or, yeah or, yeah yeah. yeah. So it has, even though if we are willing or if we can also, but there is a stop from the society as well as from the, from the family. Mm -hmm. Because you are a woman, you cannot make a decision on your own. Mm -hmm. So that is a thought which has been prevailed in us since, since the time. So we as a woman, we still consider ourselves as a weaker section. Mm -hmm. But that's why we come forward and take the um, like to take the decision and all, we still think that we are not capable of. Okay. So, and the reason and the reason behind that would what, what is the reason behind this thought that we think of ourselves as a weaker I section? The the reason behind is because of the society. Because of the society. If like if the society, if our society okay, a society we like there is no constraint for women, mm. but even though there is, I, I don't say that um, like a woman can cannot perform, uh, like cannot um, uh, take part in election and all. We can, but from the society, that support is not yes. there. Yeah, yeah. So that is the reason. Huh. So you, you, I mean, I'm just. Uh, trying to uh, link it with a bill so you don't uh, do you really think that the bill will bring some change if it is implemented you now you have reserve seats so the men cannot contest um, as uh, ma'am has added that you know there is a question of credibility of course and there could be bad candidate also but as because it's a reserve for the woman uh, so any woman which is irrespective of the ability or credibility the woman will have to contest and then will contest and also uh, as Krishna has mentioned that uh, it could be uh, someone who is actually deciding on behalf of the woman uh, some sister some wife which is already happening in the panchayat elections uh, so do you think that that gap could be met could be met by the by the by the bill which is uh, in the process of implementation. I mean, we hope that it will. It's still. It's because if, uh, it's because if, they, uh, because if a woman is elected, we know that most of the women who are elected, they are some, in the, they have the, the, the hands of some of the husband or the, uh, the, the brother or some other from the high level, so to say. So the decision, it won't, I, I won't say it's her decision because for decision making, 
it's through them only who will decide hmm. so that is the uh, the medicine. my decision making uh, role is still played by the men yes. at, yes. at the yes. end yes. yeah yeah okay even though if she is elected as a member but when it comes to the decision making i i, I think you from my from my opinion mm. it's the men only who will decide yes. yeah okay so even though if she has the power <coughs> still the men is there yeah so, yeah okay thanks ma'am can you come in <laughs> No, I comment on them. Oh, you'll pass? No, yeah, please comment. <laughs> We're just trying to have a conversation. I mean, it's not a just your thought. I mean, what do you think? See, I think that the position of the nothing has really changed. Nothing will change, rather. Nothing has changed and uh, will change. See, even those who have been elected or represented, they come from a very elite, rich family. Privileged families, yeah. See, so they have the money power, probably they have uh, the name, the fame, they have the support. But we are talking about a general uh, woman representation. So, um, I, I don't think, I don't see any changes, any... Maybe even if it's needed or so, but how much will these women be empowered to really come up to that level? These who are already there, they are already empowered. They are educated, they are hmm. rich, they are famous. So they are there. Hmm. I don't know about others. We have many women who are highly educated also, but probably the resources is not there. Especially when it comes to elections and contesting and hmm. presenting. So I, uh, I don't, I cannot say my yes because of ah. course we we are supposed to uh, to be at par mm -hmm. uh, to to be representing, but uh, even at, uh, in the, as it is in the in in the policy making uh, panel, mm. women are still very less. Ah. So uh, I think suppression is still there. Mm -hmm. We have a representative. Mm -hmm. She or she or who is sitting there, but still, finally, the position will be in the majority. Mm -hmm. So she will. She might have a say. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But uh, at the end, I feel that uh, probably one or two points might be considered, but not overall. So, okay. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, uh, we are uh, discouraging, uh, but uh, I feel that uh, somewhere this disparity is there. Hmm. Even practice and also like uh, how do you connect that with the, the six schedule state and then the question of autonomy for instance. Even in a six schedule state also I feel that uh, our economy in terms of economy I feel that we uh, women in the six schedule are really uh, contributing a lot. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, whether it's uh, just a normal business or a vendor, because we have come across so many women. So, in that sense, representation is there. In that yeah. sense, not in yeah. electoral yeah. representation, no, but in, in huh, but in 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 economic uh, in sphere, economy, there's a lot of representation yes. and participation, and yes. in ha huh, yeah. Yeah. In, in economy, I think no more women mm -hmm. in our state they are really contribute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because in my district itself, I have seen that there are more women mm -hmm. working rather than the men also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Self -help groups, self -help groups. Yeah. 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 But not in a larger scale. I think uh, the big businesses are always won by the, uh, I mean, run by the men. Mm -hmm. Some it depends again. Depends again. In Jankia Hills, women in coal belt areas, there are women who run the run of the coal belt also. Coal business, hmm. but they economically really uh, contribute. Ah, hmm. okay. I've not seen many women sitting in IDB and they're doing something or the other. Hmm. They're contributing. In hmm. some cases, the husband don't work, but the woman is working. Hmm. But then uh, political representation, when it comes to political representation, then how far 
the bill will be helpful. I mean, is it promising? As you said, you know, it is not, but then it, it is about the privileged, uh, you know, uh, women. But then uh, these people, uh, these women who are actually contributing uh, uh, by participating in the economy very directly, uh, mm -hmm. is there any any window for them? I mean, then they can... See, window in the sense, um, window is there, but what window? It's, it's all about money. No? I mean, you have money, then you contest. <coughs> Mm. Okay. Because see, I, I come from a poor family. I'm a hard working woman. I sell vegetables. I cannot go and contest an election, no? Mm -hmm. I, I might want also. Mm -hmm. I have few people also. Who, who are, yeah, family, yeah. But finally, not all will support. No? Mm -hmm. So finally, I, I lost even whatever little I earn also. Mm -hmm. My oh, that's so all money power. Mm -hmm. We have illiterate ministers. We have illiterate community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, running the state. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they have the to run for the election. So the dynamics is quite complex. So in that way, reservation bill is not going to help much. Not much. Okay. Okay. Uh, so maybe we'll hear for the men, from the men, only men in the session. The concept is good, but it will not have impact in India, but other part of India, it will have an impact. Uh, why it, it don't have an impact in Meghalaya? I mean, why do you think so? I think in Meghalaya, like we have seen like um, women winning election. Uh -huh. So we have seen also women giving up to them, uh, fight with a male candidate. Like you can see in the link, hmm. she is a woman candidate and she won, almost won the election. And the person who, and they present a like, family, hmm. just won by two, three votes. Oh. So it does not matter whether she's woman or man. Hmm. But I think what is the best is that you know, people must uh, look upon the qualification, then the how he or she is capable. Mm. Uh, that's like uh, if there is also a reserv uh, reservation for women, mm. like there might be a you know like a buffer candidate. Like I am a wife, uh, like my wife, uh, she wants to send like I am a politician, so my wife also is there. So I will send my wife to mm -hmm. send the election. Mm -hmm. So I will play a big role over there. Mm -hmm. But because while campaigning, people will look upon me mm -hmm. and my wife. Mm -hmm. So they they directly they will choose mm -hmm. uh, me. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all just a total game. Mm -hmm. Right. So the EU kind of second the the incredibility question here again after ma'am also added. Okay. So the last participant. <laughs> You're doing something else? I was actually thinking about the, what you mentioned the tokenism and having proxies. So that I was worried about you know, how much effectively is going to improve the moment. Even though there's a little problem, there's a representative, how much is going to improve in the ground level and actually improving the women's representation. And how much are they going to actually be present with women and how there's going to be policies that are more women's family and women's person. So that was our thing. So, what's your thought? <laughs> okay, so but you see a problem of representation here. Yeah, I feel like there could be pro there could be process for the men and women as well. Because when the first bill was first started, and I watched this in Karnataka news channel where one of the like leading politicians just said, "It's okay, it's okay, but I I can't contest election. I'm just making my life contest election." Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. this is the problem that's going to happen. Like it happens in the lower and the higher level elections, and everything where there's some variation. So mm -hmm. there are proxies and everything. Good wife like this. So it is just an alternative face of Patia you Kena. Know. Yeah, Panchayat level it's happening. I mean, there's a Charpan's, um, what's this called? Um, Pati, uh, this is, there's a town for it. Um, there's a town for it. I mean, Pati Panchayat or something like that. I mean, it's very common practice that you. Uh, uh, um, panchayat, which, what's the chair of the chief of the panchayat is Sarpanch, called? Uh, ha, so, Pati Chapan, so something like that. There's a term for it. I mean, it's a very prevalent practice in the uh, where the panchayat runs it at uh, function. So, uh, I mean, the, the husband pushes uh, the wife mostly, uh, it's not the sister. So, then um, she contests the election and then actually he runs the business. So, that's quite, it is already in practice in India. Okay, so uh, again, this uh, 
there's a coming back to the structure again. I mean, also this is, uh, I'm going to connect this with the question of justice and then we'll wind up the, the lecture session and then we'll go uh, to the film. So uh, basically we have concluded with the uh, problem of representation. I mean, it's already there. But then when we, when we think of as, uh, as you have mentioned, I think that you see a good promise. I mean, it's a promise. It's a good promise. It's a positive state. Anyways, I mean, we are promising in principle, we are saying that we'll be giving reservation for the weaker section of the society so that they can be represented well, right? So in a, in, on principle, there, it is very quite promising. And it is actually translation of the larger, you know, welfare state, I mean, the structure of the welfare state, where uh, the welfare is promised for the all sections of the people, irrespective of gender, irrespective of um, religion, irrespective of caste, irrespective of the community identity, the structure has promised. And it is, it is drawn from the larger theoretical, you know, promises of uh, 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 la larger theoretical promises uh, like you know the the justice the idea of justice so how the idea of justice here is translating i mean there is a historical context here that a woman had a shared experience of exploitation irrespective of uh, the community the gender so then uh, how to just how to how to you know uh, meet the injustices historical injustices which are being done for the weaker section like women. So that bill was actually on on principle, the better bill is actually trying to meet that that goal of a welfare society where the justice is given to the uh, to the unjust section of the society. Uh, but there lies a problem of representation. We'll come back to that point. But then be, uh, just to start with the idea of you know justice, what we mean by this, uh, and then what is the larger philosophy uh, of justice in a, in a democratic, you know, structure? Uh, the word justice is derived, I mean, these are the some facts about um, the whole idea of justice, how it is derived. It is, of course, derived from the Western philosophy. Uh, and then there are different th thinkers who had put forth their ideas about this thought of justice. So as an idea, it is derived from a Latin word and then it actually, you know, talks about a very, very uh, interesting uh, way as a, as a bonding or joining idea. I mean, it is a, it is a, it is just an idea in, I mean, it is not an idea in totality. It is an idea in different, uh, I mean, it is contextual and it is highly subjective and it is situational in most of the cases. So it is a connecting idea and as a joining idea. Justice serves to organize people together into a right or fair order of relationships by distributing to each person his or her due share of rights and duties towards uh, rewards and punishment. So justice here is not just about giving the right. I mean, here it is not just a question of how the women's reservation bill will be implemented and what will be the consequences of it. But it is also, in ideological level, it is about giving the right to participation, giving the right to have a <coughs> representation. So on principle, it is a very positive approach. And it, it promises the justice, which was denied for decades. I mean, we have been asking for 50% reservation. Because uh, the, I mean, the population wise, we, it is always, you know, in, in, in abstract level also, it is said that in a popular, you know, manner, it is said that half of the sky. So it's it's like, you know, we, we are the contributors, the, the women as a community, as a, you, know, to, you have to make it whole. I mean, in, in all, all levels, it, it is the half of the society, right? So, but then it was, the injustice was happening because there was no representation. There's some percentage of representation. So how to give, how to meet the goal of a welfare society, the structure of a democratic country, where the justice was promised in principle uh, in the constitution. And it is a very positive state. And it is a, uh, how it is done by giving the right. That is one of the major point of the justice. Uh, so 
uh, in a second point, uh, there are, I know it, it mentions about, you know, different philosophy, uh, philosophers, for instance, the Aristotle, I mean, it's a very interesting uh, point. Uh, I do not know in what uh, point it comes, but then uh, Aristotle uh, thinks it in a very interesting way. I mean, you treat the equals as equal and you treat the unequals as unequal. I mean, it's the equality question is, I mean, and then that's how the justice is met. How the justice is given, you behave equals as equals. Very interesting. And equals or unequals, I mean, there's a very interesting use of the word, uh, as unequals or unequals. That is, that is the one of the thought from where the, the modern idea of justice and democracies are derived. Uh, there's some other points uh, which I have mentioned maybe in the next slide will meet the same point. So as a moral, moral political value, justice is interlinked with such other moral political values like liberty, equality and fraternity. So it is, it has the, I mean, it anyways, whether we feel it uh, positively about it or negatively about it, somewhere it is a question of liberty of women the Women Reservation Bill talks about on principle. So that's how it also addresses the question of justice, right? Uh, so there are some other examples, I mean, some other uh, ideas around the whole this idea of justice, like uh, there is a procedural uh, justice, substantive justice. Uh, so, and these are the very factual points and very theoretical also. So this is, uh, this is, this depends on you, whether you want to go through it. I'm not going to it in details because we have to wrap it up and then move ahead. So there are, I mean, just, just for uh, your information that it is not just the, uh, it is, first of all, it is very contextual. It is very situational, the whole concept of justice, because when it comes to the, do it's a Western model, there are different ideas around it. When it comes to implementation in a democracy like India, where diverse cultures are there, the social, cultural and political context has to be taken care of. So these are the ideas and thoughts around which the, the theory of justice is uh, existing and drawn in different democratic setups across the world, right? So there are different thinkers like utilitarianism, which is a very old school of uh, thinking about social justice. Uh, and that basically talks about the utility concept. Uh, and which is very, you know, uh, criticized in the later part of uh, the uh, academic thinking. And then there was a dis deconstruction of utilitarianism and then it has moved into the deontological theory of justice or egalitarian, where it was more inclusive and then address a lot of diverse, you know, uh, dimensions of the idea of justice. And the few of the thinkers were like, uh, the roles, Amartya Sen, and Amartya Sen goes beyond it, Martha and uh, other things. I have mentioned the, the thinkers there, you can, you can, you know, uh, note it down if you are interested. And then there's the, the but again, this uh, school of thought also faced a lot of criticism because it did not kind of, could not uh, address all sorts of, you know, issues around the question of justice. And then uh, I'll give the example will, uh, from the Rawls idea of justice, where actually it is a, it is a Rawls model of you know uh, justice, which is uh, which the democratic countries had drawn upon. So hold a structure. Rawls actually talks about having a structure of justice. I mean, it is very structural in a form that you have a sections of uh, you know people in a uh, in an organized way, and then you try to deliver the justice in that sectional form. So it is very structurative in, in manner. And uh, it is, um, it, it also talks about uh, the liberty and then the right to uh, property kind of question. We could have linked it with the, the conversation we are having about the property rights in, in Meghalaya. So, uh, but it also faced a criticism from the, from the very recent school, which, which talks about in a more philosophical level, for instance, a communitarian theory by Schendel and all. So there are, you know, it is not, there is no absolute theory about justice. I mean, there are the lacuna, the, the gaps that which we're reflecting in the, in the present day, I mean, the democratic system of India, 
it can it can just you know we can conclude by just saying that uh, there is no system there is no uh, democratic or any form of uh, structure of governance where uh, the absolute form of justice could be delivered so there are thoughts around it and it, it the thoughts are still evolving so uh, one way or the other we'll have some problems with the policy of implementation we'll have some policy of the uh, problems in the uh, when we formulate the policy around it uh, keeping in view of the these ideas of justice uh, the ideas of you know uh, which are connecting ideas of liberty uh, fraternity etc right uh, so i think i won't go much about it because you know it will take very long so maybe we can go ahead with the oh, it's already 3 uh, 20 uh, so that we can have some discussion about the film also right can i conclude yeah it's like, yeah so with that uh, we conclude and then we'll see the film quickly it not it's not a very big uh, film it's just 20 minutes and that mostly talks about what what it talks about we'll discuss it later and then we conclude is that all right I yeah
دشنبه چهارشنبه پنجشنبه جمعه شنبه دشنبه دوشنبه دشنبه چهارشنبه پنجشنبه جمعه شنبه دوشنبه 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 چهارشنبه پنجشنبه جمعه نام ترائی در دفتر تو همگی اعضای من نوشته شده و چشمان تو این متعال جنین مرا دیده است چشمان تو جنین مرا دیده جزام ایمانی بازی را مطمئن جزام ارسیس نماد از دادی هم را بازی دارد جزام همه جا هست و همه جا می تواند باشد جزام با تنگردی هم را هست مانی جزام بطن آمد این جراحی ها چین های پوست را سخت و بزرگ می کند باقته های اصابی را می خورد بلنه اصابت ها را با ایش فرام خوشت می گیرد حس لمس و درک گرما را از انگوشت ها می کند چشم را کور می کند دیواره خصوفی میان می بینی را می برند به جگر و من به استخان را می برند پنجه ها را خوش را جمع می کند و همچنین به بیماری های دیگر را می دند جدا بیماری بیدرمانی نیست نگهداری از جدا می ها گره به پخش بیماری را می بیرم هر جا نگهداری از جدا گره به آدقی مقابی بوده از جدا بود به دامونی را و هر جا در آن بیماری به دامون جدا می را دیده هم در دشتا شفای کامی نادم جدا بیماری بیدرمانی نیست
خیال باور که زندگی من با ایام بسادت را نمیز من کردی و در گرد آگردم آمون شامونی و کدار آمیزی ها کروشنای چنار نمیز شدن خوش آب حال برو گرم که این کش را جمع میکنن و در حال ایشان دنبال ها را میچین Oh, yeah. 
نظیر می بینیم اسم این ستاره ناریس است ستاره ناریس خیش روشن است ستاره ناریس به ما خیلی نزدیک است اما ستاره ناریس به ما حکمت نمی دهد چرا باید برای داشت بزدن و مادر خدا را شما کرد؟ من نمیدارم من ایش کدار نم ادار باید ای نهر فرشا که نفس نیش تو را اونجا من به سوی ما بیا به سوی ما You conclude. You conclude. <laughs> So the reason behind the projecting this short film was to identify. I mean, just to brainstorm over. Uh, first of all, like uh, before we begin any kind of uh, activity on this, many things small we have to know what do we understand by uh, what you guys understood from this short film. So that we know that the common ground we have. I feel like that even with those disabilities, of those things that we are still happy here. And we still uh, uh, face the law and law. Hmm. I even people who sometimes with even with me, so it's normal, but we still complain, but those people, we don't have any experience. Yeah. What else? Uh, I'll give a very small, uh, you know, background. This is a uh, this was shot in 1960 and uh, in 1963 in Iran by Paro Kaurata. She was a poet. It was from only one. She was a Persian poet, but then she died after this. But uh, 
and this was a uh, shot in a small colony which is called Baba Baba Baki or Spice Leather Colony. So it was outside Tehran, and uh, this colony was inhabited by people suffering from leprosy. So there is not much information whether they themselves went there and isolated themselves or whether they were pushed out of the you know uh, regular settlements and pushed to the margins of the village. Uh, then village and uh, this colony still exists, but uh, of course it has changed in time. And uh, this was very important film for, for that time because it not only showed a uh, very close examination of the life of these people which are on the margins, but also it, I mean also to what did it did in the cinema space with the images and how it uh, shot the people through the camera. So. This is the background to it, and like you said, like this is, uh, yeah, this is one of the good interpretations because even there is a quote by that child when he asks that, what is, what are the beautiful things? What are the good and what are the ugly? Yeah. So when he answers, uh, even uh, to me, if someone asks us what are the beautiful things, we might say the same thing. There will be no difference. So here you have rightly said that. Uh, even though they are suffering, there is this sense of happiness because they do the same thing, it's the same routine, they pray, they eat, they engage in playtime and all that. What else can be? See, they are happy because they have learned to accept it. Because they know that there is no way out. They are going to live in that community among themselves. And um, also looking into the subtitles, they do, they do feel that they do need to be uh, associated with the novels also. Mm -hmm. They're talking about a beautiful song somewhere in, uh, far in the desert, you know, the genes they long for that. They long for a normal life. Mm -hmm. But they seem to be happy because they are accepting. Because they know that there is no choice mm -hmm. and uh, the house is dark. Which means that that, uh, that word itself shows that they live under sadness, under sorrow, under depression. Mm -hmm. When they ask her to find the house, the dark means it's all about sorrow. Yeah. So they, they, it's just that they've just accepted it. So it's like live with it. So the door also shows. It's close for them. Mm. It's an unopened door for them. So they have no future as such. Mm. Uh, of course, they learn to live together, be happy. There is a wedding ceremony, they did perform and all that. Uh, but it's just because of their acceptance. I don't know, is that the hospital looks like there was a doctor who takes care of them? They have the facilities, they have the everything. But they are within that. It has not shown that they are together with them, not so called normal, so yeah. called. Nothing was shown. It's mm -hmm. all about them, their life. Yeah, so uh, the hospital that we see about the food, these are the relief efforts of some people. Yeah. They are not integrated. Yeah. So yesterday, like we were discussing uh, for the people who are marginalized. So this is a very specific case of uh, people suffering from a certain disease, uh, infectious disease. But marginality, like we discussed today, it can come from different factors. It can be a community identity, it can be historical uh, violence uh, in forced on people. So when marginality comes in, the question arises that what can be the next way? So it goes back to the discussion that we were having yesterday. Should it be a policy of isolation, should it be a policy of assimilation, or should it be a policy of integration? I, I, I am not uh, thinking from a moral and ethical perspective regarding the film, because that is beyond us and we all agree on that. But from a policy perspective, out of these three, if we imagine a situation of a people, not necessarily people from the, suffering from leprosy, but people suffering from some form of marginalization. So the first question that arises before the people who are, uh, you know, uh, 
working for the state representative as representative of the state. So the first question arises in this only. What should be their policy? This is the question that arises uh, about when people uh, in the parliament were discussing about the autonomy of the uh, heavy rights. This is what they then discussed whether it should be policy of isolation, which was criticized, then it came to policy of assimilation, which was criticized again, and then it became a policy of integration, which is largely followed somehow. And then after this thing, then comes the framework in which which is which is devised, which is the aspect of integration is that is the motive of integration, the framework which is devised. There are implications to it, of course. It's not just that as a state representative, we can devise a policy and we can say that now these people will be integrated into the mainstream society. Because that is only an action one can aspire to take, but there are other implications to it. So, I mean, I would like to ask what can be the possible implication of integration? <laughs> It's the coexisting. Go is, is coexisting. It's a harmonious mm -hmm. way of coexisting. Mm -hmm. When you accept the individuals that are there, try to like form a peaceful harmony in the policy that we're saying. Mm -hmm. Of tolerance as well as still the imposition of the mm -hmm. Imposition of the majority of the people who are, I mean, who don't suffer from the same disease or same marginalization. Of course, that's the only way peaceful coexistence can exist. Mm -hmm. So, the tolerance too? Yes. You said the tolerance too? The tolerance of the differences that exist. Right, so, right, yeah. yeah. Respecting yeah. the differences, I mean, yeah. Of course, suppose minority today decides that murdering the uh, majority, I mean, murdering the minority is there or is uh, allowed. So, that is a, if that is allowed, then mm -hmm. it's not for that. It's not morally also possible, like even if you think in terms of like the legal aspect also. There's only uh, imposition to a certain extent. Just that harmonious existence of maybe two or more society in one community. Okay, so uh, I'll try to again uh, sort of maneuver along this peace line properly. When we integrate uh, marginalized people into the whatever the so called mainstream society, when we try to integrate, we come up with a policy action. And, or let's say with, uh, when the state comes with a uh, type of entitlement uh, for the people in the welfare architecture that we discussed in the week. So, uh, the question is. Are all people within the ambit of the state, whether citizens or uh, non citizens but living in the region, are all of them by default entitled to the benefits to be provided, benefit to be provided by the state? Should they be automatically entitled to all the welfare that should be provided by the state? Or all the citizenship aspect is transnational and transnational in the sense that. Uh, constitution provides me fundamental rights, but I am on, only provided with the rights if I am performing my duties. So, should it be transactional in that sense? Should there uh, should should the acquisition of citizenship and state entitlements be transactional, or should it be inherited by a natural process in which anybody who is living in a land should get entitled and should automatically come up under the purview of a policy? The former. Sorry? The former. As ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yes. Yes. We already live in a social contract uh, mm -hmm. society, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody is both like, here we don't pay tax, but then when we use the term of other states where they pay tax, we are paying tax for like, for protection. So that they naturally should be like, need to get access to these policies or. Mm -hmm. yes, so it's transactional in that sense, and it should not I be. Think it's a mixture because ah. by default, anyway, you should be entitled to that. But at the same time, we live in a social contract society, so yeah, a little bit of a give and take also. Yeah. So there is no uh, specific uh, answer because this is a very uh, point of contestation. 
But the idea was that uh, of course there are legal frameworks which work for the you know betterment of the people and also to run the society in a certain way. But uh, the right to community itself should be a natural thing. It, sh it, it should be an inherited thing. It should not be an acquisition. It should not be a transactional thing. So that was the fundamental uh, that we were trying to tread upon. The right to community and representation so that it can extend to other rights as well. And there is right to life which is codified in constitution. There is right to privacy. All those things are there. And we are automatically admitted to all, the, all those things as long as we are Indian citizens. Right. But this right to, uh, right to community itself, a right to a certain identity, that is a major point uh, of debate now because uh, this is uh, how, I mean, all the policies that are constructed in today's world target communities. Of course, inclusivity. But, uh, but diff are, different forms of community yeah, as we had discussed, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't have an answer to this. Yeah. This, uh, because it, it is not something which has been, it's not a framework altogether, it's just an idea around which we were having the session. Anything you want to add to it? I mean, I, I was just thinking when ma'am was talking about the the point, uh, I mean, when the the child writes on the blackboard that the house is black. So how do you see black here? Um, black is as a color, it is actually of all color. I mean, it has all, all the colors. So it, it is not, um, it is not necessarily the void. It is actually necessarily the completeness of the community. So each of the community in that sense, um, Though it is uh, the whole, it also problematizes the concept of marginalization because um, when, I mean, this situation that as, uh, as uh, Sir has also rightly pointed out, I mean, it is, it gives a sense of uh, fulfillment. I mean, it gives a sense of happiness, I mean, which is inherent in the community itself, you know, they're living uh, despite all the limitations, which we see it as a limitation, which we see it as, you know, they're, they have isolated themselves and then they're living a marginalized life. But that is maybe not margin, that is the center for them. That is everything for them. So there is a sense of completeness in it. So marginality in that form is also very problematic. I mean, it is anyways the identity given by the other. So, you know, we go back to the first point where we started that the identity is actually, you know, it's very relative. It is mostly given. It is, it is seen by the other, given by the other. But the sense of self is... Uh, it is it is complete and maybe it is it is the you know it it cannot be contested in in that sense right mm -hmm. so, so the sense like how we try to so we are the majority so we feel like we are like precisely when we go outside we are the minority yeah the but that is again the given the uh, location given by given others, by others. So the main of the yeah, so again that mainlander and then the northeast question, it is when we are in northeast, we are here. I mean, this is our home, you know, this is, uh, this is not majority, no minority. We are just, you know, uh, we are here. It's all basically. Yeah, it is. Anyways, the othering of the other, I mean, the, the other who gives the identity. So in that sense, also, the, it, it contests the whole question of critical uh, points about the isolation, as uh, Ashwini has already mentioned. Isolation could be a choice at many points. I mean, as we have seen in the film, you, we can't make out that whether they had chosen to leave in that place. Uh, yeah. It really depends that because it was shot at a time where internet was not uh, in existence. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? Ha, ha. Yeah. yeah. Ha! Huh, I mean, isolation in a different sense. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not in much. Uh, I mean, they were isolated in a true sense. I mean, you know, not because today's uh, world, it is little impossible. I mean, it, we can't even think beyond. Um, I mean, it's impossible to have that isolation, I mean, that kind of isolation. So. 
I'm not sure that they know whether they wanted more or whether there was more also because the exposure might not have been there. Uh, no, but again, that's a question which ma'am said uh, yesterday about that uh, getting exposed is also a threat at certain point. So it is, and it is actually a problem at of the present time that you know we can't, can't live in absolute isolation. That is a curse of the time. I mean, even if we want to not to mingle, not to have a communication, right, we are forced, yeah, like the Aadhaar case, I mean, the, it was, it was mad mandatory, the policy interventions are at points that the state has imposed on us, though we, you know, do not like to uh, disclose our identity to the state, I mean, we do not want to share all the informations, but we have to, yeah, so in, we, sometimes absolute isolation is bliss, philosophically but it's it's not possible it's the curse of the time I, i'm i'm seeing it that way so in that sense isolation is is a good thing i mean it's a positive thing i mean this is a chosen one where we are happy in our own world it's it's the house is dark it's full we have all the colors yeah but also like this is this film and there are certain examples from history where they have been uh for particularly this film, let's say, this also got the attention of the state, which uh, brought a few doctors in the region and also the doctors then lobbied to, for the construction of a hospital. So how uh, the attention of the state was, uh, you know, brought using the tool of, uh, I mean, in this case, it's camera, but there can be other ways in which to you get the attention of the state as well. Yeah. There is another film like this. Uh, it's a short film only by Louis Bunuel. It's from 1933, Land Without Bread. There is a small village in mountainous regions of Spain, which is last for this. And uh, Bunuel watched a, do a small documentary. He got inspired. He went there and he made his short film, which was screened. And that uh, region was uh, of extreme poverty. It was so poor of a region that people had uh, really serious public health concerns due to lack of nutrition. Mm. So, and a lot of public health concern in that sense. But when the film became famous around the world because of the, who the director was and also this thing, then the state, the Spain, Spanish state had to take an action and they mm -hmm. started sending uh, relief and subsidy and there was a whole lot of programs being run which led to, you know, betterment of the state if we say in the very crude development indicators. So, yeah, like you said, isolation can be a choice, it can work as a place, but only if it is a choice. Yeah, but if yeah. it is artificially imposed and it can lead to serious concerns. Uh, in health, education, and other uh, aspects of life within the structure of the state. I mean, within the if we if it is seen from that angle uh -huh. uh, within the structure, yeah. I think we can conclude the session now. Yeah. <laughs>